Imagine you're running a live event and you want all your players to contribute to a global score. You don't want to spin up a server, maintain a database, or risk race conditions every time someone scores a point. But more than that, what if you could update game logic without shipping a new build, or toggle features on and off without touching the client at all? That's exactly what Unity Cloud Code is for, and in this video, we're going to build a simple Cloud Code module that tracks a shared score across players, handles concurrency, and pushes updates to Cloud Save. It's a lot easier than you might think. Let's get into it. So to get started, we need to link a Unity Gaming Services project with your local project. Under Project Settings Services, you should be able to select your organization from the dropdown and then create a new project ID. However, there have been some issues in Unity 6.1 where those options haven't been available here. So actually the easiest thing to do is close your project, connect it through the Unity Hub and open it again. Then you should be left with something like this that shows your organization and your project ID. After that, we've got to install two packages and we can just install them by name. The first one is com.unity.services.deployment. This gives us a really nice interface for deploying code to the Unity Cloud. It should take less than 30 seconds to install that. The other package is com.unity.services.cloudcode. The cloud code package lets us securely call cloud code functions from inside our game as the current player. This is great if you want to update game logic without pushing a new build, or as we're going to see today, we can use it to allow all our players to contribute to a shared global state, even if our game isn't multiplayer. For example, maybe you want to unlock some feature of your game after all of your players collectively have scored a certain amount of points. So we're almost done set up here, but there's a couple more things to do. If we head up under preferences, we've got a new section labeled cloud code. Near the bottom, there's the .NET development environment variable. If you already have .NET in your path, then just leaving this as .NET should be fine. But you can fill out the explicit path to your installation of .NET. Now, if you don't have .NET installed, I'll put a link to the download page in the video description. You just head over to the .NET website, download the installer for your platform, and follow the setup steps. And don't forget to hit apply if you've made any changes here in your preferences. So now we can get started. We're going to be creating a cloud code module, which is just a small bundle of server side logic. And before we can create the module, we have to create a module reference file, which is just a reference to a solution that contains the C -sharp project we want to deploy. Right click in your project window and select create services cloud code C -sharp module reference. This gives us a new asset in our project. And I'm going to give it a meaningful name here, score aggregator. Let's have a look at this in the inspector. You can see here it's got a suggested path where it's going to put our new solution. And there's a button here for generating the solution. There's actually another way that you can generate the solution, and that's from the deployment window. But we haven't set up any deployment settings yet, so I'm going to click this button. That takes us over to project settings. I only have the default production environment set up in UGS, so I'm going to select that from the dropdown. Of course, it warns me that deploying straight to production can interrupt gameplay. So in practice, you might want to set up a development environment too. Clicking the Manage Environments link will take you straight there. So notice that after I selected my environment, I can now see our score aggregator cloud code module reference here in the deployment window. Right clicking this will let us deploy, but we're not quite there yet. Instead, we're going to generate solution. This is going to generate the c -sharp project file, a small example, and put it all into that solution path that was defined in the module reference. So you can navigate to the solution path and open it up in Rider. So here in my score aggregator solution, we have one project also called score aggregator. You can see it has an example script, but we're going to create a new one here. I'll just right click the project and we're going to add a new class that's going to drive all of our logic in the cloud. We actually need quite a few dependencies for our score aggregator class. We'll bring in the system and system collections generic. We need system.net for some HTTP status codes. We're going to need some async await functionality. We want to be able to do some logging inside the module. Then we need access to cloud codes APIs and its core functionality. And in this video, we're also going to make use of cloud saves APIs and its models for requests and responses. Now this is taking up a lot of screen real estate, so I'm just going to wrap this into a region and we can hide it away for the rest of the video. So next up, we're going to define an interface and I'm going to call it iScore Aggregator. We're just going to give it a single method, increment, which takes in the current execution context 
and a score value. The execution context gives us access to things like the player's auth token and the project ID so that we can securely call Unity services. So let's implement the interface on our new class. And of course, we're going to implement a concrete version of the increment method. But before we do that, I'm going to make one more type. And that's because C Sharp can't lock value types. So we're going to make a class that wraps a value so that we can safely update it from different function calls. Later, we'll use it to make sure that only one piece of code updates the value at a time, not prevent any conflicts when you have multiple players updating the score. So let's create a lockable of type long that will keep track of how much score has been added so far. We could also have a lockable of type date time that will remember the last time we sent a score update to cloud save. We'll use it to rate limit how often we write to the server. Next, let's keep a reference to the cloud save API so that we can read and write data and also grab a logger to help us output messages during execution. We can take both of those in through the constructor. We'll cache the logger reference and we can get the cloud save API from the injected game client. Now, just for interest sake, I'm also going to log a warning here, and that's just so that we can see how warnings work inside of UGS. So as soon as this constructor runs for the first time, we should see something in the logs. Now let's get into the logic of our increment method. We're going to use a lock to make sure that only one piece of code can change this value at a time. If multiple players trigger this function at once, lock prevents them from stepping on each other's updates. If one player is already updating the score, the next player's call just waits briefly. Once the first update finishes, the lock is released and the next one goes in. This way we avoid brace conditions and keep the score accurate. Next, let's lock last update and we can check to see if at least 10 seconds have passed since the last flush. If not, we're going to skip writing to the server and just let the score continue to accumulate. If it has been long enough, we're going to update the timestamp and continue. So now all of our players have been adding to the running count. We're going to store this in a new variable, score to add. Let's lock the counter again. We're going to read the total and reset it to zero. This will give us a clean value to send to cloud save. Let's do that in a try catch block. I'll just expand this out so that we've got a little bit of room here. Now we're going to use cloud saves get custom items async method. This lets us grab any cloud save data we want, like player progress or global event scores or feature flags from a named data store. We'll give this data store a string ID of global and we just want to return an item that's keyed by the string event score. We're going to grab the first item from the result. In this case, it should be the event score. We should be able to convert that score into a long. If that fails, we'll go back to zero. We'll calculate the new score by adding our in-memory total to what's already in cloud save. And then let's log out what we're about to write. We'll be able to see this in the logs later as well. So now we can send the new score back to cloud save. The write lock will ensure that we're not overwriting someone else's changes. If for some reason the save didn't succeed, we can recover the score so that it's not lost. We'll just put it back into the running count. We can do something similar if we catch an exception. Let's log the exception with an error message. And again, we add the score back into memory so that we don't lose it. So that's our full score aggregator class. It collects score updates from players in memory, then periodically writes them into Unity Cloud Save. It uses locks to keep the data consistent, a shared timestamp to limit how often we flush, and a little bit of logging. So now that that logic's ready, we're going to hook it into the system using another file that we're going to call configuration. First of all, I'm going to delete this example script. We don't need this. And then let's create a new file for our configuration class. It's giving me a default namespace here, but that's going to be a conflict. Let's rename it to community goal. Now our configuration class is going to need a few dependencies. One of them is actually Microsoft extensions dependency injection. Then we're going to need the cloud code APIs and the cloud code core. Our configuration class is going to implement the iCloud setup interface, which only has one method setup. Setup is going to be called with an iCloud config, which has references to the dependencies that we're going to need in our service. We're going to register the game API client as a singleton. Add singleton is part of Microsoft's dependency injection system. We're also going to register our concrete score aggregator as the iScore aggregator type. This way, whenever something asks for an iScore aggregator, we give it the one and only instance of our score aggregator class. So this configuration class is really about setting up our dependencies for dependency injection. And that's what the iCloud code setup interface is all about. You can also add scoped or transient dependencies, similar to most other dependency injection frameworks. I'll leave a link to this documentation in the description. 
So now that we've built our score aggregator and we've registered our services with dependency injection, we're ready to expose it through a cloud code function. And that's where a new class that we're going to call score module comes in. In cloud code, each public entry point, like a score submission or a reward claim, is just a method marked with a cloud code function attribute. When Unity sees this attribute, it wires up the method and its parameters using DI. That means we can ask for things like the player's context or our iScore aggregator right in the method signature, and Unity will pass them in automatically. You'll notice that we never registered iExecution context for dependency injection, but Unity provides that automatically. That means when we call this add score method, we actually only have to pass in one parameter, the score. The body of our method is simple. We're just going to call the score aggregators increment method, pass in the context and the score. And why don't we expose one more cloud code function? We can call it initialize cloud save. This is something that will only run once, just to create the event score key in cloud save and set it to zero. We won't call this in a production build. We can use the cloud save API here to set the value manually, just like we were doing earlier. So now we've exposed two methods that we can call in the cloud. But before we can use them, we have to deploy them. So let's go back to Unity. Just a few buttons to press now. After you've created a module, you can generate bindings. Bindings are type safe client code that you can use to call your module endpoints from your game. That's going to add some new code into your project so it will compile. And then you'll have a new folder underneath assets called cloud code. Underneath cloud code, we'll have generated module bindings. And under that one, we'll have our score aggregator folder where we have a new class score module bindings. These are methods we can call from our game that will call their counterparts in the cloud. Now let's come back to our resource file. I've bookmarked mine in my favorites. From here, we want to deploy. Let's open up the deployment window. From here, we can right click and select deploy from the context menu. This just takes a few seconds and we'll have all of our code deployed to the cloud. When it's done, you should see a green light. Let's close up this deployment window and click on go to dashboard so we can go see what this looks like through the web interface. This will take us right into the cloud code section of UGS. You can see our score aggregator module has two endpoints, add score, which takes in one param, the score, and initialize cloud save, which doesn't take in any parameters. From the cloud code section of gaming services, you can also jump over to logs, which is extremely useful for debugging anything that you're trying to build. We're going to come back to here in a moment. There's only one thing left to do, and that is to test. So let's write a simple example mono behavior here that's going to call these endpoints. We'll bring in all the dependencies that we need, including generated bindings so that we can use the local methods that we created when we generated the bindings. So inside the example class, let's have an async start method. First, let's initialize Unity services. Then we want to make sure the player is signed in. For this test, let's just sign in anonymously. Next, let's create an instance of our module bindings. This is the class that we generated from the inspector and will let us call those remote endpoints. Let's start a try catch block. And first of all, let's try our initialize cloud save method. Remember, it doesn't take any arguments. It's just setting up our event score and giving it a default value of zero. And maybe after that, we could try adding a score of, say, 25. Let's log something out to the Unity console. And then let's do something if we catch an exception. So a cloud code exception, we could just log that out to the console as well. OK, let's add this to a game object and give it a try. So I've already set up my game object. Just going to hit play. In a moment, the asynchronous method will run. And there we go. We see our message in the log. Let's stop and jump back into UGS. So here, I'll just hit the refresh icon on my logs. And right away, we see the warning that I set up in the constructor. So we get a timestamp and the message that I wanted to print out working as expected. You can drill down into the fine details if you want, but we're going to leave this for now. Let's move over to Cloud Save to see what's going on with our data. Here in the menu, I'm going to select Game Data. You can see we've now got a custom ID for Global. And inside of there, we've got a key for our event score, which has been set to zero. Now, remember that we did add 25 to the score, but because we're rate limiting it at 10 seconds, it's not actually going to write to cloud save until at least 10 seconds has passed since the constructors run. So we'll wait 10 seconds and run it again. But this time, we don't need to run the initialize cloud save method. That was just for some initial setup. Back in Unity, we can hit play again, and that should send another 25 points into our running score. But this time, 10 seconds has elapsed, so we should see an update in our cloud save. So if I come into here and I refresh the page, 
In just a moment, we should see that our event score has been updated and the total value now should be 50 because the start method in our game has been run two times. If we come back over to cloud code and now look at the logs, we've got a normal log message here saying that we flushed the score of 50 so that our new total is now 50, which of course lines up with what we see in our cloud save. Why don't we jump back into Unity and hit the play button one more time. Now the expectation is that we should go up by another 25 points because 10 seconds has now elapsed again. It should write that immediately into Cloud Save. So let's hit the refresh button on our logs again. There we go. It flushed our score of 25 so that our new total is 75. And if we come over to Cloud Save, back into game data under global, we should now see that our event score is 75. And yes, it is. So now that we've gone through the basics of cloud code, there's probably something that everybody is wondering, and that is, what does this cost? Well, let's jump over to the pricing page. I'll put a link to this in the description as well. If we scroll down a little bit here under game backend, we can see cloud code here. Under the free tier, there's 1 million invocations per month going up to 20 compute hours, which looks like it's calculated by the second. Cloud Save, which we're also using, lets you store five gigabytes for free per month with 1 million writes and 1 million reads. If somehow you manage to exceed the free tier, well, I salute you. And even then, it kind of looks like the prices are fairly reasonable. So to recap, we've basically built a fully functioning cloud code module that tracks global state across all players in about 15 minutes. And we didn't have to stand up our own server or really do very much setup at all. So whether you're setting up feature flags or a live event, you're tracking community progress, or you just want to have some game logic on the fly without having to push out a new build, Cloud Code can give you the tools to do that really cleanly, securely, and fairly fast. And with that, I'm going to wrap it up for today. Join us on Discord if you like, where other people just like you are talking about topics just like this one all the time. And of course, there's a new video on this channel every Sunday about an intermediate or advanced Unity topic, so make sure that you subscribe, hit that like button, I'll throw another video up on the screen. Maybe I'll see you there.